Imagine a time when the concept of infinity was as alien as the outermost reaches of the cosmos. This is where our story begins with Zeno of Alea, a Greek philosopher who lived from 490-430 BCE. In the fascinating world of ancient philosophy, Zeno stands as a figure of intrigue, a master of riddles. He proposed a series of paradoxes, riddles that play with our understanding of reality and the universe. The most famous among these is the dichotomy paradox, a riddle that challenges our understanding of motion. Picture this. Before an object can travel a certain distance, it must first traverse half that distance. But wait, before it can cover half the distance, it needs to travel a quarter of the distance. And before that quarter, it must cross an eighth of the distance. You get the idea. This process continues indefinitely, presenting us with an infinite number of progressively smaller distances that the object must cover to reach its destination. Now here's the twist. If there are an infinite number of these smaller distances, Zeno argues, then surely the object can never reach its destination. After all, infinity is, by definition, endless. How can the object possibly cover an endless number of distances? This is the heart of Zeno's dichotomy paradox. At first glance, this paradox seems to defy our everyday experience. We see objects move and reach their destinations all the time. We see a runner crossing the finish line, a bird reaching its nest, a leaf falling to the ground. So how does Zeno's paradox fit into our understanding of the world? This paradox forces us to question our perception of motion. Is our understanding of movement flawed, or is there something deeper at play here? This paradox, just like all of Zeno's paradoxes, nudges us towards a deeper understanding of the universe. So if Zeno is right, how is motion possible at all? How can we ever reach our destination if we have an infinite number of smaller distances to cover? To understand Zeno's dichotomy paradox, let's break down the journey of an object moving from point A to point B. Imagine you're planning to walk across a room. Simple enough, right? But to get to the other side, you first need to reach the halfway point. That's the first half of your journey, and it's a distance you can clearly define. But wait, before you can get halfway there, you need to get a quarter of the way there. And before you can get a quarter of the way there, you need to get an eighth of the way there. And so on. This is the crux of Zeno's dichotomy paradox. It suggests that any journey can be divided into an infinite number of smaller steps. And here's where it gets tricky. If there are an infinite number of steps to complete, how can you ever reach your destination? After all, infinity, by definition, never ends. So, in theory, you could be walking across that room forever, always having the distance, but never quite getting there. A paradox, indeed. But wait, your everyday experience contradicts this, doesn't it? You've walked across rooms, run marathons, driven on highways. You've completed journeys, despite Zeno's argument that you should be trapped in an infinite loop of having distances. Zeno's paradoxes, including this dichotomy paradox, have been a topic of fascination for centuries. They challenge our understanding of space, time, and motion, creating a sense of intrigue and curiosity. They force us to question our perceptions and the nature of reality itself. Is Zeno suggesting that all motion is an illusion? That every journey, no matter how small, is an impossible task? Or is there something deeper at play? Could it be that our understanding of infinity, of space and time, is fundamentally flawed? Or perhaps, is it our mathematical framework that needs a revision? So is Zeno suggesting that motion is an illusion, or is there something deeper at play? Stay tuned as we delve deeper into the resolution of Zeno's dichotomy paradox. Enter the world of calculus, a branch of mathematics that deals with rates of change and accumulation of quantities. In calculus, we find our resolution. Let's delve into how calculus unravels the intricate knot of Zeno's dichotomy paradox. It gives us a nifty tool called infinite series, which is in essence the sum of an infinite number of terms. Now, you might be thinking, how can you sum an infinite number of terms? Wouldn't that be infinite? Not necessarily. Consider this. If you keep dividing a distance by two, what do you get? Half, then a quarter, then an eighth, and so on, right? These fractions might seem to go on forever, but here's where it gets interesting. If you were to add all these fractions together, you'd find they converge or come together to a finite value. In the case of Zeno's dichotomy paradox, the sum of these infinitesimal steps is simply one. But how does that resolve the paradox? Well, this tells us that even though there are an infinite number of smaller steps or distances that an object must cover, their total, or sum, is finite. This means that the object can complete its journey in a finite amount of time, even if it's broken down into an infinite number of smaller steps. So, you see, Zeno's dichotomy paradox isn't a challenge to the concept of motion, but rather an invitation to think deeper about it. 
It's a mathematical puzzle that nudged the human mind toward the discovery of calculus, a branch of mathematics that has revolutionized our understanding of the world, from the orbits of planets to the dynamics of economies. So far from debunking motion, Zeno's paradoxes actually paved the way for deep mathematical insights. Next time you see something move, remember Zeno, and marvel at the journey of thought that brought us from paradox to understanding.